Okay, uh, what's going on, everybody? We are here. We're live. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Uh, if you can see and hear me clearly, uh, please drop a one in the live chat, and then we can get today's stream started as I'm waiting for the ones to come into the live chat. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like button because that is the most important thing you can do for me on this channel. What it does is that it helps to make sure that those who are subscribed to the channel will indeed get their notifications, and it also helps to push this video through the YouTube algorithm as well. Secondly, if you're new to the channel or maybe you've been ghost watching this channel for quite some time now please hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever i release a new video or when i go live like right now and lastly please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms to inform your family and friends of this news and information uh and it does also help to give me a slight boost in the youtube algorithm as well and with the ones entering the chat and with the introduction out of the way we can now get into today's stream. Oh, yeah. Also, I'll always forget to say this in the beginning. Follow me on Telegram at TD Media Group. The link to my Telegram should be pinned in the live chat, I think. I hope I put it there. Uh, but if it's not, it's in the description box below and will be pinned in the comment section as well uh, once the stream is over. Now that the introduction is out of the way, uh, let's get into today's show. And today's going to be a good one. It's going to be an interesting one. Uh, we are headed back over to the People's Republic of Chicago. Uh, if you don't know, Yesterday in the People's Republic of Chicago, uh, Emperor Brandon Johnson held a city council meeting uh, where he allowed the peasants of the People's Republic of Chicago to speak. He gave them permission to speak uh, for about three minutes apiece so that they can air their grievances out uh, with the way he's ruling the city. And I want to go through a couple of those uh, segments, right, uh, where the people had an opportunity to speak to Emperor Brandon Johnson. I want to go through a couple of those things, but I specifically want to focus and highlight a individual who is a white liberal and the way he taunted black Chicago uh, for them being upset about the migrant crisis and how things are going and how they're being completely ignored, you know, in the face of Brandon Johnson, who upon his rise to becoming the mayor of Chicago, he, he played the black card up well, you know, he played the black card up well, um, really highlighting on the fact that he was from the West side. He would always talk about some, oh, I'm from the West side. The West side is running for mayor, the West side. Yeah. And that was kind of his way of signaling to uh, black Chicagoans that, hey, one of your own is, is running. It's me, BJ from the West side. I'm running for mayor. And he got voted and elected. He became mayor. And he carried on with that for a little bit, even after he became mayor. Oh, 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 yeah, the West Side is in the mayor's office. And from that point forward, after he entered the mayor's office, uh, he made it rain close to a billion dollars on Biden's migrants to date. I want to say it's been at least a billion dollars. Uh, if I remember correctly, last year in 2023, the state of Illinois gave Chicago roughly around... 328, $330 million. Uh, the actual city of Chicago contributed around $195 million, right, towards Biden's migrant crisis. And then when you take into account this year, uh, city and state combined altogether, we're already looking at $400 million in 2024, uh, with an additional 70 million still pending. That's still pending. And that's what this city hall meeting uh, was about, right? So we're looking at a billion dollars already spent on Biden's migrant crisis in Chicago. So let's get into it. Let's get into what the people had to say. Um, we're going to start off with one brother first. Uh, he said a few things that I like and that I want to uh, harp on a bit and explain what he's talking about. So let's get into that. Let's get into him. And then after him will come the white liberal. Um, and we're going to have you know fun discussing the white liberal who's you know supposed to be our friend, right? He'll be the friend of black folks, <laughs> but we'll see how his conversation sounds, right? So let's get into it. Let's get into it. This $70 million, $70 million, and not counting the past, past millions of dollars that this city done approved of, or this state and the county, et cetera. $1 billion to be exact. $70 million. 
Y'all won't even put a million dollars in one neighborhood. A million dollars in one neighborhood. Brandon Mayor Johnson, you say that you for the children, et cetera, you for the youth. You know, you want to have a work program for the youth, et cetera. Where a million dollars for these work programs for these children? See, I'm not going to address nobody in the room no more. I'm going to just address you whenever this is city council. If you know, if you now, I want to stop for a second. I like what he said there, and he's going to elaborate on him why he's saying that I'm not going to address anybody else in here anymore. When I come through, I'm just going to address you directly. But let's stop right there. The reason that he's harping on the fact that to date, as I explained at the top of the video, a billion dollars has already been spent and committed towards the migrant crisis affecting Chicago. A billion, right? And so far, and I did a today's news video about this about maybe like three weeks ago, something like that. Brandon Johnson dedicated $1 million to be broken up between four neighborhoods. $1 billion for Biden's migrants, one million to be broken up between four struggling neighborhoods to go out to philanthropic groups within the neighborhood to do God knows what. As we speak right now, Brandon Johnson is sitting on top of $400 million in C-19 relief funds. He's sitting on 400 million right now. Forget about the budget. Forget about the budget that they constructed. Budget aside, city budget aside, he's sitting on 400 million dollars in C-19 funds that are still lying around from back in 2021. And he said that he was going to use those funds and direct them towards the citizen population. But we've yet to see that yet. While they've pulled a billion dollars out of the sky, for Biden's migrants, only one million was committed to be broken down between four Chicago neighborhoods to do God knows what. So I just wanted to highlight that point so that you know where he's coming from when he says that. If Brandon Johnson wanted to, he can go five million a piece, five million for this neighborhood, five million for that, five. And, you know, in a fashion that makes sense, that would actually create change in the neighborhood, set neighborhoods. Right. The same way he's dumping money on Biden's migrant crisis, he could dump money on these troubled neighborhoods to fix the things that need to be fixed. But he's choosing not to. He's choosing not to. Now, let's let this brother finish out. See, I'm not going to address nobody in the room no more. I'm going to just address you whenever this is city council. If you know, if you go look on Brand Chicago home site, you see all them reverends and things like that. They got all these nice churches in these neighborhoods. Nice mega churches. And our people homes. And I, wanna, I don't even want to say our people homes because some people, we got to be honest, they do let their stuff go. They do live up in trash, etc. But and willingly of their own will. But what about the face? Right? What about 79th Street? You see what I'm saying? What about the face? What about 71st Street? What about all these different streets with these abandoned buildings? With these empty lots? Those abandoned buildings and empty lots are going to be refurbished and turned into affordable housing for the migrants. That's what's going to end up happening. And we're going to get into that a little bit later when the white liberal speaks, you know, our friend, the white liberal that's on our side. Right. And then the churches come up and try to buy these lots. That's why I say to the people, come up out of her, come up out of Rome. That's why I say is that come up out of there. The snake is no good. It don't matter who they put at the head. He ain't running nothing. We got to be honest about this situation. But I'm still going to talk to you. I'm still going to call you out. Now we're going to get into our friend, you know, friend of the black community, uh, the white liberal. I want to pull something up on the screen very quickly first before we get into the white liberal. I want to pull something up on the screen first. What I want to do very quickly 
and I guess I could just say it. I mean, I don't have to put it up on the screen, but that's just, I can't help myself. I always got to bring some sort of a report and poll on the screen and read it, right? I just can't help myself. Uh, so as you can see here, and I've discussed this numerous times before, if you're a subscriber to the channel and you've been subscribed for a while now, uh, there's this poll here, poll shows majority against, polls show majority against Chicago sanctuary city status. And I'm not even going to bother. I won't you know, bore you guys with reading all these colorful lines that I have highlighted here. But what it states in this poll here is that when the city of Chicago was polled on whether or not they want to remain a sanctuary city, the overwhelming majority of black Chicagoans said no. The second largest group of people who said no were Hispanics. The third largest group of people who said no, overwhelmingly no, majority no, were the AAPI community, Asians. The only group of people who said they want Chicago to remain a sanctuary city were white Chicagoans. Translation, white liberals. They were the only ones that wanted that. White liberals, leftists, Democrats, progressives that's who wants chicago to remain a sanctuary city right and you're going to listen to one of them speak right now and when he speaks listen to the way that he taunts the black folks in the crowd who are not feeling what he's saying they're not happy with what he's saying they're booing him and that's to be expected because boos and cheers happen in city hall meetings and town hall meetings. If you're saying something that the majority of the crowd enjoys, they'll cheer. If you're saying something that they don't really like, they'll go boo. But our friend, our buddy, our pal, the white liberal who's on black folks side, he took it upon himself to thumb his nose at him and basically say, ha ha, there's nothing you can do about it. The, the migrants are here. And we're going to keep giving them hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Now, before I actually play that, got to let the suspense build up, you know. What I want to do, because I want to draw a comparison right now, is that I want to go to a video that I have played a million times over. Some of you might be tired of seeing it, but it's very relevant because this clip here is of Joe Biden when he was asked about reparations for the descendants of American slavery, black Americans, that is, right? He was asked about whether or not he supports reparations. And when he answered the question, he told you in 2020, and I played this multiple times back then, he told you, I'm going to give your reparations to illegal immigrants. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. And my point of playing it is not just to keep rehashing that point, but my point of playing it is to have you see the comparisons and attitude towards Black Americans and helping them, as you would expect a Democrat, liberal, progressive to do, because that's how they pretend to carry themselves, right? But when they're actually pressed on the matter, they show you who they really are and that then they show you they're not as friendly as they came off to be. So let's look at the aggression with which Joe Biden answered that question. And I want us to compare it to what our friend, our buddy, our pal, our comrade, the white liberal, how he addressed black folks who are booing him as well. So let's get into that. Let me play this from Joe Biden. Do you support reparations? Look, let me, since I haven't spoken on this, got a chance. Um, number one, the reason we're the country we are is because of immigration. We've been able to cherry pick the best from every single continent. The people who come here have determination, resilience. They are ready to stand up and work like the devil. We have 24 out of our 100 children in our school today is Hispanic. 
The idea that we are going to walk away and not provide every opportunity for them is not only stupid and immoral, but it's bad for America. They are the future of America, and we should invest in them. Everybody will benefit from it, every single American. And you should get used to it. This is a nation of immigrants. That's who we are. That's why we're who we are. That's what makes us different, and we should invest in them. Thank you, Mr. Biden. Senator Klobuchar, you had your hand up. Get used to it. Get used to it. We are a nation of immigrants and we're going to invest in them. You can cry if you want to, but like he told you. And you should get used to it. This is a nation of immigrants. That's who we are. That's why we're who we are. That's what makes us different. And we should invest in them. Biden has spoken. Biden has spoken. Um, And so has our white liberal friend that I'm going to pull up for you right now. Now, and as I'm pulling it up, there are 420 of you in the stream. Please hit the like button if you haven't already. I appreciate that. And thank you very much. Hello, and thank you for taking my public comment. My name is Kirby Callen, and I am an organizer in the 32nd Ward, where I focus on expanding public access to mental health care, housing, and public safety. I'd like to start my comment by addressing the Godzilla in the room, and by that I of course mean affordable housing. Uh, The Finance Committee endorsed the proposal for $1.25 billion for affordable housing over the next five years. So much of life as a Chicagoan these days is defined by the transient nature of constantly moving every year or two because you can no longer live in the community you want to place roots. And so we need to build affordable housing. Let's borrow money, let's cut some tape and build more affordable housing units across this city with speed and safety. I also want to address the uh, substitute order to change the future of ShotSpotter to a ward by ward basis. We cannot do this. We need to cancel the ShotSpotter contract and discontinue its use, discontinue its use citywide. <laughs> An aldermanic discretion of shot. I want to stop right there. From my understanding, because uh, there was no shot spotter um, back in my day when I was growing up, right? There was no shot spotter in Chicago. Um, but from my understanding, shot spotter, and please correct me if I'm wrong in the live chat, all my Chicago people that are in here, shot spotter is essentially this camera that sits on top of a pole, not a light pole. And Upon a gunshot going off, it immediately clicks on. It clicks on, starts recording, and it it, it grabbed you. It grabbed you. It, it it got the person who shot the gun. It's it's recording everything. If I'm not mistaken, that is what Shot Spotter is. As soon as the gun goes bang, click, it's on, and it, it it's, it's capturing everything that's around, right? Shot Spotter, by and large. If I'm not mistaken, which I don't believe that I am, is largely in underserved black communities, we'll say. We'll just say that underserved black neighborhoods. And when he said he wanted to, we need to get rid of Shot Spotter, the booze that you heard, mind you, this is a white liberal. The white liberal is telling the mayor, you need to get rid of Shot Spotter out of these black neighborhoods because it's discriminatory against them and it's a waste of money, right? But the actual black residents who live in that neighborhood and those neighborhoods and that are at the city council meeting are booing because they want it there. They want shot spotter there. They don't want to get rid of it. This is part of their crime prevention method. This is part of the deterrent of gun violence. Now, one can argue how well of a job it's doing. That's one thing. But the, 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 the point is, is that they want it. These black folks, they're wanted there. And you have a white liberal that's telling black folks what they do and don't need in their own neighborhood. Go figure. I'm pretty sure where he lives, there is no shot spotter. And I'm pretty sure where he lives, there's no need for it. And I'm pretty sure where he lives, whatever oppression that's happening to black folks because a shot spotter has nothing to do with him and his children where he live. But he's telling you what you do and don't need in your neighborhood. 
and it's smug when you have the audacity to boo. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But it gets better. It gets better. Let's keep going. Spotter would lead to a patchwork across the city. I'm going to wind it back just a little bit. Not do this. We need to cancel the shot spotter contract and discontinue its use. Discontinue its use citywide. An aldermanic discretion of shot spotter would lead to a patchwork across the city of profiling, oppression, and aggression. If we are truly to believe. What does he know about profiling, aggression, and oppression? You're a white liberal. You don't even live in those neighborhoods where shot spotter is. I'm getting actually upset. That's why you had slamming. <laughs> I'm slamming the mouse on my desk right now because the audacity is crazy. Our white liberal ally telling you what you do and don't need in your neighborhood. That policing can fight crime. We don't need to be expending their resources on something that leads to 85% of the time to incidents where there is no evidence of a gun crime. 90% of the time with no evidence of a crime at all. Shot spotter wastes our resources and puts those that are most vulnerable at risk of being profiled and damaged by. He's white. I mean, <laughs> and the thing is, is understand there's nothing wrong with any, with non-black people taking up, in my opinion, right? There's nothing wrong with non-black people taking up a cause that they feel would do justice by uh, black Americans or anybody else, right? There's nothing wrong with that in a genuine sense of wanting to help and assist. But that's not what this is. That's not what this is. Clearly. They want it in their neighborhoods, the black Chicagoans, especially the ones that are in the city council meeting. Clearly they want it. And this white liberal ally, who's our friend, is telling you, yeah, you don't need it. It's actually oppressing you. You might not realize you're oppressed, but I know that you're oppressed. And I'm telling you that you don't need it because it's oppressing you. And I know what's oppressing you more than you do. <laughs> Go figure. Go figure. By our police. And I also want to spend time speaking on the migrant funding. This is a crisis across our city, but it is not because of the immigrants, it is because of our lack of allocation of resources. This migrant crisis is a resource crisis, and we need vast resources to protect our new community members. 70 million, 70 million. <laughs> Hey, you can, you can fight it as much as you want, but it's true. These are our neighbors. These are now a part of our communities. Immigrants are a basis for our future as a city ever since. He said, hey, you can fight it all you want. <laughs> you, hey, you know, you can boo and be mad and, you know, you can fight it all that, all that you want. But, you know. And you should get used to it. This is a nation of immigrants. That's who we are. That's why we're who we are. That's what makes us different. And we should invest in them. He literally sounds like Joe Biden. He's like, yeah, I mean, you can fight it all you want. <laughs> Blacks, you can get boo all you want, be upset all you want to. But hey, <laughs> uh, this is what we're doing, buddy. This is this is what it is. This is what it is. <laughs> Telling you. Hey, you can you can fight it as much as you want, but it's true. These are our neighbors. These are now a part of our communities. Immigrants are a basis for our future as a city ever since the beginning to now. Immigrants are the lifeblood of this city, and we need to support them, not just in the 70 millimeter, but to address the future of this city. We need investments in affordable housing, public access to mental health care. So Stop right there. I want to go back to what I said earlier when the first guy was talking, and I didn't want to reintroduce this point too soon when he talked about affordable housing the first time, our white liberal pal. Look at how he is so gun ho about affordable housing for who? Not for you. Not for you. Before there was a migrant crisis, he wasn't stomping the ground for affordable housing. Now that there's this so-called man-made migrant crisis, of which he's all for, we need to hurry up and speed up and put this money into affordable housing so that we can house these people. Not the citizens, not you who need it. Not you who've been dying for it, desperate for affordable housing. No, not you. He wants it for them. You can leave. If you don't like it, get out of here. <laughs> you know, if you don't like it, you can leave.
That's essentially what he's telling you without actually saying it. You, you can leave. Like, you know, what we're going to do what we're going to do here. Our new neighbors are here to stay. And we need to speed up the affordable housing uh, situation right now. We need to go ahead and, uh, Brandon Johnson, build these affordable housing up so that we can get these uh, uh, migrants in there, Biden's migrants in there. And for those of you who are booing, you know, you don't want shot spotter. You don't want more money going into the migrant crisis. All you bitter blacks. Well, you know, you can get out of here. This is your white liberal ally telling you this. Our friends. Allegedly. So that these people are protected and ensure that they can are the lifeblood of this city and we need to support them not just in the 70 millimeter but to address the future of this city we need investments in affordable housing public access to mental health care so that these people are protected and ensure that they can live in chicago in a community that is vibrant depending not only them but the connections within the community 70 millimeter is, excuse me 70 million dollars is a great way to start, but it's not enough. It's possible for us to not spend enough on migrant funding. It is not possible for us to spend too, excuse me, it's not possible for us to spend too much. We're spending too little. Let's expand the money for migrants. They need our support. They're not going anywhere. We are a welcoming city. We're going to stay that way. So let's make sure they are protected. He told you, didn't he? He said it, it's, there's no such thing as too much money. 70 million is a good start. Our white liberal buddy, our white liberal pal, our white ally, you know, white liberal, Democrat, progressive. And don't come into my stream or in the comment afterwards saying, oh, you don't understand how politics works. Uh, Democrats are different from liberals and liberals are different from progressives and progressives are progressives are disgruntled Democrats in general. OK, so I, they're all the same. Because Brandon Johnson is a progressive, as well as all of those, all of his progressive allies uh, in, in the city council with him. At least half of the city council are his allies. They're all progressives. And guess what? They all take their marching orders from the DNC. So miss me with that. Oh, the progressives aren't the same thing as liberals and liberals aren't the same thing as shut up. Shut up. Seriously, shut up. It's all the same. At best, an independent progressive that doesn't necessarily associate with himself with the Democrat is just a disgruntled Democrat. They're all the same. They're all the same, literally all the same. And this is how they do you. Listen to how he's talking to you. Listen to how your ally, your buddy, your pal is talking to you. The same way Joe Biden did with the same level of aggression, the same sarcasticness, the same authority. He's speaking to you with authority. He told you they're not going anywhere. They're here to stay. $70 million, that's a good start, but it's not enough. There's no such thing as too much. We need to give them more money as much as possible and do everything that we can to make sure that they have what they need to thrive in this city. And if you don't like it, bitter black folks, you can leave. You can leave. That's your liberal ally who told you that. And you should get used to it. This is a nation of immigrants. That's who we are. That's why we're who we are. That's what makes us different. And we should invest in them. Facts. <laughs> facts, Biden. Facts. Big facts. Uh, now, before we get to the... Uh, next individual who's coming up next. And I think I'm going to have to skip him for the sake of time. And I don't, I don't want to skip him. Uh, and I'll explain to you why in a moment, but for the sake of time, we're already 28 minutes in. Um, I think I'm going to have to skip over this guy, but anyways, I'm rambling thinking out loud when I should just be saying this stuff in my head while I'm still doing the show. Uh, there are 642 of you in the stream right now. Please hit the like button. Uh, I would really appreciate that. That would help with the growth of the channel. It really does. And also, I just want to give my thank yous to those who are supporting the channel uh, right now because you guys are the lifeblood of the channel. Without your support, I don't exist. Uh, shout out to Apex Prowler. Apex Prowler stated, uh, America has hundreds of old ghost towns. Why has the government... Republicans and Democrats not looked into mixing up those towns. Salute. Yeah, there's ghost towns all over this country. You know, there's ghost towns all over the state of Illinois. You want to prop them up somewhere? We are just not going to get rid of them. Okay, well, we'll fix up the ghost town. You go over there. You know, 
I don't see anything wrong with that outside of deportation. That's, that's the number one thing. <laughs> but if you're not going to deport, put them in the ghost towns. You want to fix something up? Go, go do it over there. Go do it over there. Uh, A.R. Smitty. Thank you. A.R. Smitty said, did he mean to say like the nation of illegal immigrants? That's a correction. You you did that there. You know, I, I appreciate the correction. That's what he should have said. That's what he should have said. Shout out to Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania stated, uh, pretty sure the illegals will be the ones that have firearms via the cartels. Hence, let's go. Let hence let's get rid of shot spotters. I mean, we'll see how that works out moving forward. Um, there was that story that I did that happened in Chicago. What was it about, about a month ago about that Venezuelan uh, migrant? air quotes migrant uh who sh got out of his car and shot and killed another hispanic woman he killed a hispanic woman uh she wasn't venezuelan by the way either i don't remember if she was mexican or whatnot but it was it was a i suspected that that was cartel business in the original video when i talked about it i i, I feel like that was cartel business uh, a grown man uh hopping out of his car at two o'clock in the morning and gunning down a woman who's walking alone that sounds like cartel business to me but i don't know man we'll, we'll we'll see how things carry on moving forward um for the sake of time i'm gonna have to skip this guy here i wanted to play what he had to say um but because uh, i like this guy too um just so you get a close-up he, he's actually a youtuber out of chicago i forgot what his real name is um but he goes by the YouTube name of Ford Boss Me. Uh, I like his videos. I like his videos. You know, he talks a lot about um, illegal immigration and whatnot. Some of you might know who Ford Boss Me is. You know, he, he speaks a lot about that. But then when he's not talking about, you know, the migrant crisis, um, if I'm not mistaken, his actual specialty and what he does for a living is uh, he's a mechanic. So he's like fixing cars and you know, Fords and stuff like that. You know what I mean? He's showing you how to fix things. But outside of fixing stuff on his YouTube channel, um, he discusses the migrant crisis a lot. And I like listening to him. Uh, he, he has a really good channel. So uh, go ahead and check him out. We're not going to I don't I don't have time to actually play what he has to say, unfortunately. But yeah, shout out to Ford Boss Me. Shout out to him. Uh, I really want to get to this woman right here because um, what she had to say. was sad. It was really sad, actually. It was really sad. So I'm going to play that for you right now. Thank you very much for your comments. Good afternoon to the afternoon. city of Chicago. I am P. Ray of the 37th Ward. Chicago Red is our organization. Because we started this session with a prayer, I want to start my comment with the scripture. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, but if any provide not for his own and specifically for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So I want to talk to y'all today about not going to hell. In the 37th war, there was a family, the Jones family, Amarie Jones was standing in her family building that they've owned for 40 years, doing a TikTok dance with her mother. A bullet came through the window, hit her in the neck. She fell to the ground in front of her mother and bled to death. A month ago on the Chicago mugshot page, her mother was on that page. Her mother had on her daughter's rest in peace t-shirt. She washed it so many times that it was completely faded out. She was completely high out of her mind and the charge was possession. Now, the first $51 million that this council gave to the migrants came from the opioid settlement fund. I am here on behalf of the Jones family, on behalf of the 37th Ward, on behalf of Black Chicago, on behalf of the entire city to ask you all to vote no and put that money back in the opioid settlement fund. We need that money in my neighborhood. We need that on my block. That woman should not be at Cook County Jail because she's grieving over a random act of violence that caused her to lose her child in front of her face when the city of Chicago has millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to give to people who ain't paid a dime into the tax base. Do you hear what she's saying? Did you hear the story that she just told? I, I have a, I have a son, right? He's 10 years old. Most of you know that already. I've talked about him on and off. 
So for me, when I hear stuff like that, it hits me a little different than how it might hit other people or how it might hit you if your children are like adults already and they've been adults for some time now. This woman was doing a TikTok dance with her daughter in the living room. A bullet came through and mind you, the white liberal, that's the guy that wants to get rid of spot shotter, right? A bullet came through, hit her daughter in the neck while they were doing a TikTok dance. She bled out and died in front of her mom. Her mom unable to deal with it. And Lord knows, I don't, I, I don't, and most of us who are parents feel this say, knock on wood if anything were to ever happen to my son. There's literally no reason for me to exist anymore. I, 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 don't, I don't need to be here. I don't need to be here. There's no reason for T to exist on planet Earth at that point if my son's not here with me. So that's I, I feel that's how I feel. So I, I and I understand, therefore, what has now happened to this woman. In her struggle to cope with that. She has fallen into drugs. And instead of getting the help that she needs. She went to jail over it. And has her mugshot circulated through a newspaper. Meanwhile, the funds that were supposed to be allocated and in place to help her is going to illegal immigrants participating in this mass asylum fraud orchestrated by Joe Biden. That is so criminal. That is so criminal. And as she's sitting up here articulating this and discussing this, Emperor Brandon Johnson, he's just sitting there with his hands in his pocket. He can give a doggone about what this woman is saying. Y'all know I don't like to curse. I don't curse on his channel. Family channel. He could care less. He could care less. All those aldermen, they could care less. Emperor Brandon Johnson could care less about what she's saying. And for that matter, when anybody's talking about that's coming up there to air their grievances out, he can care less. There's about maybe 30 more seconds left in what she's saying. Uh, I'm going to play it out, and then we're going to close out today's stream. Let me rewind it back just a little bit. It's horrible, man. That is horrible. A bullet came through the window, hit her in the neck. She fell to the ground in front of her mother and bled to death. A month ago on the Chicago mugshot page, her mother was on that page. Her mother had on her daughter's rest in peace t-shirt. She washed it so many times that it was completely faded out. She was completely hot out of her mind and the charge was possession. Now, the first $51 million that this council gave to the migrants came from the opioid settlement fund. I am here on behalf of the Jones family, on behalf of the 37th Ward, on behalf of Black Chicago, on behalf of the entire city to ask you all to vote no and put that money back in the opioid settlement fund. We need that money in my neighborhood. We need that on my block. That woman should not be at Cook County Jail because she's grieving over a random act of violence that caused her to lose her child in front of her face when the city of Chicago has millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to give to people who ain't paid a dime into the tax base. We've been in my building for 52 years. We're about to pay some old taxes. The Jones family has been in their building for 45 years paying taxes every year on time. So I'm asking y'all to use our tax money for our people. We need it. We got people leaning. We got people rocking. We got overdosing. We got uh, pass out lines. You live on the west side, uh, Mayor Johnson. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We need the money for us. We need opioid treatment on the west side of Chicago. We are the head headquarters of the cartel and everybody in here knows it they selling more drugs than the law can allow and y'all giving money back to them because they traffic those people up here so we paying them going and coming absolutely not we pay too much it costs too much money to live in this city help wanda jones help every other grieving mother who feels like she has to go get high to get over the loss of her child this is a woman who lived in that house she still sleeps in that living room where her daughter passed out and bled to death. So I'm asking y'all to say no, put these people on the back burner and put the money back in the opioid fund. We need that money. Thank y'all.
the money that's needed to deal with everything that that woman just articulated is going to Biden's migrants. One billion dollars has been spent, slashed and committed so far. And to date, Brandon Johnson has spent slash committed only one million dollars to be broken down between four neighborhoods as situations like this occur where he himself also wants to get rid of spot shotter the same way his white liberal pal and our white liberal pal was speaking on black folks in Chicago's behalf as well, telling them what they do and don't need. Take that woman's story into consideration and you tell me, I, I think they need spot shotter where she's at. It sounds like they need spot shotter. White liberal says, no, you don't need it. That's what he said. He said, you don't need it. Sounds like they do when horrific things like that are happening. Sounds like they need spot shotter. It sounds like they need funds going into these neighborhoods for drug prevention and things of that nature, but it's not. Our white liberal friend, you know, our ally who cares so much about black folks, white liberal slash Democrat progressive, he said 70 million isn't enough. We need to spend even more money. There's no such thing as too much. Wherever you got to get it from, even if you're getting it from programs and money that was allocated to help people like the woman she just discussed, even if you had that money that was going to them, snatch it out of that community and give it to Biden's migrants. So now the only question is, is that come November and moving forward, really, are the people of Chicago going to move differently as it pertains to their votes? Are they going to move differently? That's yet to be seen. Uh, I hope they do. I hope they do. But we just have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. And with all that being said, that does it for today's stream. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me today. There are 670 of you in the stream right now. Please hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Share this video on your social media platforms. Follow me on Telegram at TD Media Group. The link is in the description box below. Um, and it will be pinned in the comment section once the stream is over. And I do want to give my last thank yous uh, to those who's contributed to today's stream. Uh, because like I said, without you guys, uh, I don't exist. I don't exist. So uh, shout out to... Um, I always have trouble saying <laughs> Papa Onaya Shelly. Thank you, Papa Onaya Shelly, uh, for six months of service. I appreciate you, uh, Papa Onaya Shelly. Uh, Papa Onaya Shelly doubled down, uh, said deport, deport them all, deport them all right there with you, right there with you. The overwhelming majority of them are participating in asylum fraud, and they know it. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Uh, shout out to Freedman's Network for the contribution to today's stream. I appreciate you, Freedman's Network. Thank you very much. And shout out to Quantum Mania, uh, who said cartel money slash weapons laundering confirmed. There you go. There you go. I, I'm right there with you. Everything that she was saying concerning cartel money, the money in, money out, money to come in, money to go. Somebody's getting rich. It's just not you guys. And it's definitely not me. Uh, so anyways, once again, thank you all for joining me today. It's time for me to head out of here. Uh, I might see you guys tomorrow evening at the same time. Maybe, maybe not. But if not, I'll catch you guys next weekend or next week. And I'll definitely drop some little videos here and there uh, over the weekend. So have a great evening and a safe one. Peace.